as well. Awesome. Cool. All right, well, we'll get started through today's topic is attracting your ideal client. Um, I, had, I went on the Google machine last night and uh, I've had I've had the opportunity to get some training from uh, April Porter. She's a, a highly recommend uh, anything that she teaches. She's an expert in this field um, of or just in teaching what that's like. Um, and this, uh, some of what I took, uh, some of the contact is from smallbizsense.com, so if you want to check it out. So I really just, I used their headers as a guidepost and then just added in my own little things that I've learned over the years. So the first, the first question is, what do you, you know, know what you want. So you want to think about what drives you in particular, because your ideal clients, there's going to be some similarities. Um, and just thinking about your business, you know, if you want to think about what makes you happiest through that business process um, what brings you joy so for myself personally I'm 100% results driven so I get happy when I get the results from my clients and guess what I attract clients who expect big results so and want that easy bun they want somebody who's gonna make things easy for them um, and that's a little bit of a bird's you know more of a bird's eye view um, and then you can spend some time kind of constructing your ideal client profile. So just thinking about who have you enjoyed working with in the past? Um, who's your favorite client? And you might have more than, you can think of it in terms of like a client customer avatar. You can have more than one. Myself, for example, one of my specialties is working with seniors. So I have that avatar. First time homebuyer avatar, I've got it, you know, like a, you know, there's different ones, but they're all, there's gonna be strands that they're gonna have in common, but you can start as you build that out, then you can start marketing very specifically and very directly to those people. Um, for example, when I took April's class, one of the, you know, they helped me create an ad targeting seniors and really getting very granular about what that particular market is looking for. A lot of times we want to shy away from getting very specific because we think in our heads that, oh, if I do an ad that's focused towards this very narrow group, then all these other people aren't going to do business with me. That's actually not true. They really just see that you're specializing. It doesn't mean that they're not going to call on you. They're actually going to see that you have expertise and they're probably going to trust you more um, in terms of reaching out to you. Um, you know, things to think about, what does this person need? And I want to go through this really quickly and then I thought we could, like if somebody just wants to talk through something because I figure that's better to learn to kind of make it personal for yourself. So thinking about what they need um, and how do they want to have those needs met? That's a really big thing. So I think that's where so many companies miss the mark is they don't think about how the customer wants their needs met. I mean, you look at Amazon, it's a classic example. They made, they made it the easy button and it took so many other businesses way too long to get on board. If they would have adopted early that whole concept of the easy button, we would have, I don't think we would see so many stores having lost so much business and shutting down. Um, and then think of up to you. Yeah, we already talked about that. And then really know your value. So what's in it for your ideal client when you when they hire you to solve their problems? You really need to know what you bring to the table and spend time thinking because it's going to be unique for everybody. We're all different. You know, you can't walk five you know five feet and not kick a realtor. I mean, however, yeah. you, so you have to you really have to really think about how you're different. I always think there's nobody who lives in mortgages, so I can say this, but I always like the like the, the typical mortgage lender will say, well, we do FHA, we do VA, like blah, blah, blah. Everybody does that. What's good, what's unique about you? So that's something to really think about. Um, and then just in knowing your value and uh, thinking about how do you deliver on your promises and on your, and how do you deliver, how do your systems help create that client, ideal client experience? And then building your brand. Uh, your brand should reflect your personality your, and your core values, like attracts like. So don't be, uh, don't shy away from, you know, letting people know, like if you're involved in, you know, any community involvement and things that are outside of the business, people like that. People want to do business with people they know, like, and trust. Um, and then people, and some of those things that you, your core values, those things that you display that have nothing to do with your business, there's going to be people who are going to do business with you because of those things aside from what you bring to the table in your business. Um, uh, create a clear, and so in your branding and your marketing, you wanna have a clear message and a clear call to action. And again, I already said go narrow, be very specific. Um, 
and be where your target audience is. So really know where are these people? Are they online? Are they in person? Is it a specific demographic? You know, know where they are and go find them and make sure that you're communicating with them and getting in relationship with them. Uh, focus on your customers. Uh, and like I already said, do not bore people with your features and nobody cares. Literally, they don't care about all your features, like, oh, I'm so awesome, and here's why I'm so awesome. Nobody cares. They want to know what that awesomeness is going to do for them, and that's how you need to language it. What are you doing for them? What are you doing for them that's going to make them want to do business with you? Uh, and then also, make your clients a part of your business. So just, you know, a lot of people mess up, they follow up. I mean, in my industry, I mean, 80% of consumers say they would have used their past realtor, only 20% do. Why? Because they didn't follow up and stay in touch. It's that. It's not that hard. Um, and get people involved. People like to be involved with you. They like to be a part of what you're doing. Uh, you know, you know, send emails, poll, you know, do polls, have do um, contests, have events, things like that are a great way to just kind of build your tribe of people. And again, like attracts like. So, you know, if your customers have friends, they like you, they're going to tell their friends, and then you just get to work with more of the people that you really want to work with, um, which just makes life a lot better and easier. And provide consistent quality. Um, your client should always know exactly what they're going to expect from you. It should never, um, never be different. Like, you know, like I always, Chick fil A, that's the easiest example. You can go to any Chick fil A anywhere, food's always the same. Um, the service is always great. They always say my pleasure. They're always friendly. It's always the same. It's always clean. And, you, and when you can go in, it's clean. Mm -hmm. So all of those things are really great. Um, and then also start a referral system. So you can create a system that rewards people that refer you if your business allows you to do that. Um, it doesn't have to be all that complicated, but that's another thing just to make sure people are showing that appreciation of people who did refer your business. They took the time to tell somebody about you, which obviously helps your income. All right, so anybody want to talk about? No, you were just talking about, we actually just started this, you're talking about making, um, making your clients part of your business. Mm -hmm. I know we just started doing that. We work with Smoothie King mm -hmm. and um, uh, the owner, she, had, she actually owns four, four locations, but I'm surprised to the fifth one and everything. And the other day at the chamber meeting, um, I. Uh, he, he offered to, uh, she, she gave us some coupons and we used them for free samples. Mm -hmm. And so I went around to some businesses with different people were like, oh my gosh, because it, so, it was so hot out that day and everything, you know. So we, you know, like, yeah, we, 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 you know, we, rep, you know, we, we work with Smoothie King and she gave us, you know, uh, she said, some free samples there if you guys would like any and you know, some coupons and everything like that. And, you know, we'd love to work with you too. And, you know, so we, we just, we've made her part. We've been working with, we've worked with him for, for her since the very beginning and everything. So and she's, she's one of our, you know, one of our customers and things, so but uh, we started doing that, like making them a part, and we do that at community events too. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one thing you were talking about is uh, of what makes what, what something that makes us different. We love getting out in front of people, like in community events. Yeah, and that's that's a huge part of our. So you really, know, you're building a relationship. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're we're building a relationship, and, and like we're getting we're getting our customers out in front of all at all these community events and everything. So we really love doing that. That's a big part of what we do. And um, but yeah, but the, yeah, you were talking about the um, making them a part of our business. So like yeah, we just started doing. That. Troy, um, we go into subdivisions. We usually get their HOA approval first. Mm -hmm. Go into a subdivision and we bring a Kona ice truck mm -hmm. in. So if there's a smoothie truck that they have. Let me know because we've made uh, Bob Donald very, very successful. Yeah, <laughs> we've made his summer because of all the events that we do with him. I'll ask Lisa. Yeah, yeah. Because if they him. have one, that is something that we we're looking for more alternatives to do this. But when you were saying when you were talking about um, targeting, finding the ideal client, I have a saying, and I know some people don't like me saying this, but I like to fish where I know there's lots of the people I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. So you can go out and so I do seek out a lot of times if it's an association, mm -hmm. like the Realtors Association, I've been to the Commercial Realtors Association meetings. Um, we're a member of the um, Community Association Institute, which is of all the homeowners associations. Mm -hmm. So I like to fish in a stocked pond rather than go down the street and look and try to filter through and look for those ideal people and try to find where they all graze yeah. and that makes it a lot e i mean it sounds kind of crude to say that no, no, but no, it's no. it's it's true because mm -hmm. if your target audience say for engineering plumbing and 
electrical things. Um, well, then the Plumbers Association might be a good place. Anything that you can do where there's a whole bunch of people where your message going out one time hits a lot more people at one time. Absolutely. So it just makes it a lot easier. But knowing who your ideal client is is <clears throat> crucial. And yet